Hey everybody, this is Andy Ben with the CSS New Civil War Interpretive Center with video two of our fruit preservation series. In this video, I'm going to talk about jams and jellies, but first I'm going to get to something that we typically forget about uh, being a fruit. Tomatoes, right? The lowly tomato. How do we preserve tomatoes? Tomatoes, all fruit has natural acid in it that helps us preserve it, but tomatoes don't quite have enough, so we need to add acid right when you add vinegar to it or citric acid right and then some of the other ways that fruit are preserved that we forget about is salsas salsa is tomato with hot peppers spices sugar right probably some lemon juice in it to help preserve it uh, they are very similar to chutneys from india they have fruit hot peppers and spices and salt preserve them there are relishes with different fruits uh, in them and vegetable mixes with uh, salt and vinegar to preserve them. So don't forget that opens a whole nother door way into preserving your bounty from your orchard and from your garden is your salsas, relishes, and chutney. So don't forget about them. We'll get back to into our jams, jellies, and preserves. At the museum, uh, when I'm talking about food preservation, I start getting into jams, jellies, and preserves. One of the things that, that uh, I started encountering was children asking me, what's the difference between preserved jams and jellies? Well, we know it's the amount of fruit in them, right? Preserves have a lot of fruit. Jam has mushed up fruit. Jelly almost has no fruit in it. Well, how did they come about? Probably more than likely is when you're cooking down your whole fruit in that sugar syrup. Some of them will be more ripe. And if you boil them too violently, they're going to come apart, right, into bits. And so not wanting to waste those bits is why we have whole fruit preserves jams and jellies. That syrup left over from after we've taken all the fruit bits, that strained all the fruit bits out of it, we've got jelly. Uh, jelly from the Civil War is more liquidy uh, than the, that jam or jelly. You can stick a spoon, it'll stand up in the jar, right? Um, they're not as thick. And the reason is that we can go to the store today and buy pectin that we can add into our recipe. What is pectin? Pectin naturally occurs in fruit. It's what keeps a fruit hard when it's unripened as the ripening process starts go happening, uh, the pectin starts to decrease in the fruit, and the fruit becomes soft and ripe, made more easily for uh, us to enjoy. The pectin's there to protect, help protect the fruit from insects. So during the Civil War, if we wanted to really stiff jam or jelly, we need lots of pectin, so we need to have fruit that's not quite ripe. So when you go to the grocery store and you have those strawberries, they have the white on the top of them or whitish green or you turn around one of them that you've got off the bottom has one side that's not quite right. That's the perfect fruit for making jams and jellies out of it because it's got pectin in it. If you, during the Civil War period, 19th century, if we wanted really stiff jams or jellies, we might have to add just straight fruit that's unripened at all. We might have to add just green strawberries into our strawberry jam or jelly uh, juice to really firm it up. Um, the uh, ability to make, uh, uh, you know, jellies and jams and, and other things during the Civil War because of the blockade uh, were limited because you can't get these certain products through. So people started writing in newspapers just the way people take to social media today and give out helpful tips of make do uh, cleaning products or make do's on different things. They started writing in papers during the Civil War. In 1863, Richmond, they uh, two gentlemen combined these all into one book. And in that book, there's a recipe for apple cider jelly. And yet he's, they're just taking the juice apple cider and cooking it down into a syrup and use it as a substitute jelly. Um, at home, you can make a jelly. Um, you don't need to have a vast garden. You can just go to the store and get apple juice or grape juice or whatever your favorite, favorite juice. Uh, I would suggest something that's shelf stable on the juice aisle. Um, and you can take that um, you can may even use one of some of the juice blends that your kids might enjoy drinking. You need that juice, you need sugar, and you need boxed pectin that you can find in the canning aisle. You can go on and find simple recipes that break down how much juice, how much sugar, and how much pectin you need 
to make a, a simple jelly at home. All you need is a big pot, and you're going to add that juice. You're going to add that sugar. You might need to add a little bit of water, and you're going to know how much pectin. You're going to heat that up, up to boiling, and eventually it's going to get to a state of what they call breaking, which you can dip a spoon into the jelly, pull it out, and as you draw your finger back through it, the jelly does not come back together. It's like you've parted the jelly sea on the back of the spoon, and it's solid, and you know it's nice and firmed up. So jelly's pretty easy at home. It's like a nice, fun project. Like you said, you, you probably already have sugar at home. You probably have a juice. It's just going out there and, and finding um, pectin. Um, I hope you're enjoying these videos. Hope you're learning something. I enjoy bringing them to you. As always, check out our videos on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram.